Hello everyone, somebody asked me to uh, basically make a small tutorial on pulsating kind of effects inside the material. It's gonna, not going to be like this complicated as the hurricane that you see here, but at least there's some pulsating effect to it. So I'm going to do something really quick like that. I'm, I didn't prepare this really, so I'm just going to go with the flow and do it as quickly as I can. And hopefully it will be clear. So for simple starters, I'm going to make a simple cylinder. I'm going to make it 1000 high for now. The radius can be a clean 32 or whatever. And um, we need quite a few height segments. So I'm going to just go with 32 or maybe even 60 because it's a simple tutorial. You can keep it much lower if you want to, but it's nice to see it very fluidly. Uh, size is fine, I think. So that's it. And... This is 3ds Max and I already have the mapping coordinates applied. So if I go to the unwrap UVW, I can clearly see here that it's properly applied. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do first, because I don't want them, is to delete the bottom and the top. Um, back to the unwrap UVW. Open it. And uh, make sure that it's aligned nicely. Now I'm using the poly unwrapper tools, but you can easily do it with the arrange tools like this. But for some reason, I prefer to do this just in case. And I want the bottom part to be here. So I'm going to double check that. Yeah, I selected the bottom. It's at the bottom. All right. And that's basically it for the mesh. Now, obviously, you can do this in another UV channel in case you want to have something textured or whatever. And yeah, let's do something else real quick as well. I'm going to add another channel to it. I'm going to open UV editor. And in this case, I'm just going to get a forward projection. So planner mapping on the Y axis or the X axis, whatever. It should all work. And that's it. Now, yeah, okay. I'm gonna export it real quick. Let's see if I can have some weird location here. Uh, work NATO works, I guess, for now. I'm gonna export it real quick. Okay. And let's make a quick test folder in here. New folder. Pulsating. There, I'm going to import that mesh into here. Uh, let's see. I, there's the NATO folder. And I didn't rename it, so it should probably be that one. Date modified cylinder. There we go. Uh, everything is fine in my case. I don't want to generate light maps. I don't want this to auto generate collision, etc. etc. Import all. And there we have it. Let's make a quick material. And pulsating thingy. Open it. Go back to the content browser and preview that mesh in here. Now I'm going to just add a simple color to it. Something yellow or whatever. It's totally fine. Put it in emissive color. Now we have a nice yellow cylinder. Now we need a specific texture that's uh, horizontally aligned and has a white line in it or a black line. It depends. You can always invert it. So I'm just going to go to filter, textures, and see what my textures hold because I have so many. I'm just going to scroll real quick. So I can probably. Shorten that search by writing gradient or grad. Uh, this is for okay. We have the clover mesh panel that works, beam tests. There are quite a few that might work. So, yeah, let's just pick that one. As you can see, gradient. There we go. And oh. apply it there. Now I'm going to add a panner. I'm going to preview it. And for that I need vertical movement. So one. As you can see it's moving upwards. Or you can also do downwards. That's totally fine of course. 
And now I'm going to multiply that with a random value for now and plug that into the world position offset. There we have, but as you can see, it's only moving to one side. I'm going to multiply it a bit more so you can definitely see that. Now, if you want that to be on the same every angle, then you need a vertex normal world space, which will take the vertex normals of the mesh in world space and up multiply that. So, to do multiply there, multiply here, and yeah, let me disable the mobile thing. Now, the cleaner this texture is, the more cleaner that shape will be. And you can always offset a little bit with lerping or whatever. Uh, let's see. Gradient. Is the Clover Mesh pattern slightly different effect instantly, as you can tell. And I'll open my content browser once more. I actually have a texture folder here. With gradients. So there should be one that might work. You can do a few examples. The black, white to black gradient thing. This looks quite odd, of course. And if you, yeah, you can pick any gradient you want and play around with it. There you go. Now, the forward projection that I did in. The forward planar projection UV I did you can easily add by adding a texture coordinate node, look into the coordinates, and then change the coordinate to 1. And it does exactly the same thing. The only difference is the way the UV map is applied. The first one, the first UV map, has this nice seam here because it's wrapped. It's this uh, line here is cutting it, yada yada yada, but in the second UV channel, don't see the line because it's just a forward projection. So the UV map that's here, this side, the polygons are also exactly aligned to the ones in the back. And more than often that works. So yeah, there you have a simple pulsating material and you can really add a lot to it. Let's say we duplicate this one. And uh, we change, we preview it real quick. And we set the tiling to 2 here. You see 2 of them. There we go. Now let's change the pattern speed a little bit. So like 0 0.44, whatever. And we either multiply or add it. I'm going to add it to it. There we go. And then plug it in here. Stop previewing and you get something like this. So with a lot of playing around, you can do quite some cool stuff. Okay, I guess that's it. Hope you learned something and take care. Blue O's out.